Hi everyone and welcome once again to Southside Dodge Rebels this week from the NMAX Centrium, home of the 2012 Scotties Tournament of Hearts. It was a busy week for your Red Deer Rebels Hockey Club. Three games to show you highlights from and we also tee up the four game BC road trip and go behind the scenes for a player profile with Colton Mayer. But we go back to last Wednesday night here at the Centrium as the Rebels played host to the Prince Albert Raiders. Alex Petrovic winds and fires it past Cole Holowenko just 10 seconds into the game. It's 1-0 Rebels. Turner Elson looks to add to the lead, makes a great move in alone, but Holowenko keeps it out. Later on in the first period, Joel Hamilton with some good work to get the puck toward the net. He has stopped twice but stays with it and cashes in with his third try. Hamilton's fourth of the season makes it 2-0 Rebels through 20. Chance Braid gets a great scoring chance for the Raiders, but a great save is made by Devin Dubik. Elson comes in with another chance for the Rebels. He gets stopped twice, puck rolls right through the crease and somehow stays out. Chad Robinson then sets up Tyson Ness. His shot does beat Holowenko, but it rings off the iron. Another fine save by Devin Dubik, this time off a sprawling chance by Shane Daniluk. Neither team able to score in the second period, so we go to the third. Hamilton makes a nice pass over to Petrovic, who doesn't get all of this shot, but he gets enough to sneak it past Holowenko for his second of the game and seventh of the season. 3-0 Rebels at that point. Hamilton would earn his third point of the game when he sets up Cormier in the slot. His eighth of the season rounds out the scoring in this one as the Rebels shut out the Raiders 4-0. I thought it was a, a real good hockey game, a well-played game. and We were focused off the start, had the, the good start. Obviously, when you score uh, early like that, it's, uh, it's a big help. It's nice to play with the lead, um, but I thought... Uh, we just played a real solid 60 minutes tonight. We were we were good in a lot of areas. I thought we did a good job of limiting their opportunities. Um, did a good job of uh, having puck possession. We had the puck a lot near end of the rink, and um, you know, we generated a lot of scoring opportunities. We, uh, we had a lot of opportunities in the second period where we just seemed to be finding legs and, and shin pads in front of the net, uh, but had a lot of uh, opportunities there. And, um, you know, I just thought for, for having four defensemen, I thought they really stepped up back there and played. Uh, they all played a lot of minutes again. I thought Stephen Hack played very, very well tonight. Uh, uh, Petro was real good back there. All four of those guys did a good job for us. And, um, you know, we need him to right now. So overall, I thought it was a, a real gutsy effort by everybody. Right from the start, we uh, had a great start. We got a goal right off the bat there. And I think uh, we just kept rolling from there. I think, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had possession of the puck most of the night. And, I think that, uh, that helped a lot, uh, especially with us four guys on the back, so I thought played really well. Devin Dubik wasn't really all that busy in this game, but he was solid, making 17 saves for his first shutout as a Rebel. Two nights later, the Rebels ventured out west for a task that's never easy, a road game in Cranbrook versus the division rival Kootenai Ice. Not much offense in this game, but the Rebels didn't need much. 4.15 into the first, Inglis wins the faceoff to Petrovic, who blasts home his eighth for a 1-0 lead. In the third period, Brooks Maxwell would cash in on a great setup from Tyson Ness and Matthew Dumba for just his third goal of the season. Dubik shuts the door at the other end. Rebels win 2-0. Back-to-back -back shutouts for the Rebels' 20-year-old netminder and in two different sets of equipment as his black and white pads finally arrived on Thursday. The orange pads go by the wayside. The Rebels' third game of the week took place this past Saturday right here at the NMAC Centrium as they welcomed the league's hottest team 8-1-1 in their previous 10 games, the Moose Jaw Warriors. And there are those brand new black and white gold pads we mentioned a moment ago. Rebels open the scoring in the first as Matthew Dumba slides it over to Joel Hamilton. He fires home his fifth of the season, 1-0 Red Deer. Two minutes later on a power play, Stephen Hack gets it over to Kevin Podchek, who winds and fires. Spencer Tremblay makes the save, but Brooks Maxwell finds the rebound for his fourth of the year. Rebels lead 2-0 after the first. Warriors get on the board in the second period. A turnover by Alex Petrovic ends up on the stick of Quentin Howden. He scores his 24th of the season. It comes shorthanded, making it 2-1. Red Deer restores its two-goal lead when Cody Teal pounces on the loose puck and blasts home his first ever Western Hockey League goal. 3-1 Rebels at that point, setting the stage for an eye-popping scoring barrage. Side to Braze, across to Kirsch. He'll wait, he'll shoot it, saved by Dubik, rebound, scores! Braze at the side of the net, puts it home. Middle there to Howden, now it is Howden, right side, the shot scores by Henry! James Henry ties this game at three. The shot by Brown, saved by Dubik, they score! 
Matt hit somebody in front of the net, and the Warriors got their first lead of the night. They're up 4-3. He's going to bring it in. He's going to come down the left side, shoots it, scores! Charles Inglis has tied the game at four. Back to the point. Kendall McFall for the Warriors. He scores. McFall from the left point to Elson. Elson shimmies in behind the net. Scores! Turner Elson with a wraparound. We're tied at five. McElroth will get it out. Here is Kirsch to the middle. He scores. Kirsch walks in and rips it blocker side. And the Warriors go up 6-5. Nine goals in total in the second period, six of them by Mushja. In the third, Warriors switch goalies, going with Luke Siemens for the final frame. Mark McKenzie throwing his weight around a bit. Shane Gwinner, not a fan of that, leading to a spirited tilt at center ice. A scary moment for Hamilton. He gets hit along the boards and runs into the stanchion between the players' benches. Hamilton made his way onto the Rebels' bench where he remained under close observation by Rebels staff. Hamilton would be treated by EMS staff and taken to hospital. More on his status in a moment. After his fight, McKenzie breaks in trying to tie the game for the Rebels but is denied by Siemens. Quentin Howden comes the other way looking for his second of the night but is stopped by Dubik. A tough, tough penalty call against Turner Elson gives the Warriors a late power play and they would take advantage to put this one away. Kerr shoots from the point and beats Dubik clean to make it 7-5. Warriors add an empty netter, making the final 8-5. Well, it was uh, you know, an exciting game. There was certainly lots of action, lots of uh, goals, which isn't, uh, isn't typical. Uh, either way, they're usually in a lot of low-scoring games. So. Um, but I thought we came out in the first period and played uh, played a real solid game and, and uh, uh, generated some opportunities. I thought in that uh, second period it kind of opened up both ways and um, you know, I thought more than anything we just made some some mental mistakes. Uh, I thought we looked like a hockey team that's been undermanned for a while and the first thing that goes when you get worn down is your uh, is your mental aspect of the game and I thought we just made some mental mistakes where uh, you know we were trying the effort was there but we uh, we just made some mistakes that that uh, you know were a bit uncharacteristic some defensive zone coverage miscues and some turnovers where we were just reaching for the puck didn't keep our feet moving and, and those types of things and uh, um, yet I thought we we battled hard we got into that third period and uh, you know what we're a team that's been playing with four defensemen and in the third period we ended up down to down to eight forwards. We lost uh, Corey Miette in the first period again tonight. Uh, Joel Hamilton went down early in the third. So it's a tough league to play in when you're rolling eight forwards. And I thought the guys uh, really gave a good effort. After a pair of great defensive outings, the Rebels got caught up in a shootout with the high flying Warriors and simply could not keep up. As seems to be the norm after every Rebels game of late, more injuries to tell you about. Corey Miette took a shot off the top of his foot and would leave this game early. Thankfully for Corey, it's only a bruise. He's listed as day-to-day -day and should be good to go for the BC road trip. A much different story for Joel Hamilton. He suffered fractures to his L1 and L2 vertebrae. Joel is expected to make a full and complete recovery, but in the meantime, he'll miss a minimum of four weeks of action. It was a pretty uh, scary thing. I've never seen that happen in, with my years of playing hockey, and I haven't seen it. It was pretty cool to go see him, and I saw him today again, so I spent a lot of time there, and he's doing well. He walked today, so it was really good to see, and it's nice. It's, it's nice to see that he's getting better. Certainly a much happier moment for Cody Teal, but Bruno Saskatchewan native finally gets rewarded for his improving play of late with his first ever Western Hockey League goal. I felt great. You can't. I don't think you can explain how it feels, but I hope there's more to come. I just followed the play up, the four-man attack, and it came out to me, and I shot it, and it went in. <laughs> Can't really explain it. Same story for the Rebels coming out of the weekend. Four points behind Brandon for the final playoff spot with two games at hand. John Person continues to lead the Rebels in scoring with 48 points in 54 games. Turner Elson, the team leader in goals with 20. And here's that BC road trip we've been alluding to. It starts Wednesday night in Prince George versus the Cougars. Continues two nights later in Kamloops. And then Kelowna and Vancouver are the final stops before the Rebels come home for a brief break. And as always, you can catch each and every broadcast with Cam Moon on the home of the Rebels, 106.7 The Drive.
coming up after the break. Some more on that four-game road trip, and we have a player profile with Colton Mayer. Southside Dodge Rebels This Week is presented by Southside Dodge Chrysler Jeep in Red Deer, Alberta. Welcome back to the show. Well, as you can see behind me, it's going to be pretty tough to play hockey here over the next couple of weeks. That means the Rebels will be away from the NMAC Centrium, and it starts this week with the first of two back-to-back -back road trips, a four-game journey through BC. Last time we went to BC, it was a really good trip, so maybe that confidence can still wear off on us in this road trip, so hopefully it'll be a good one. We just need to keep working hard and uh, believing in each other. We've done a real good job of that lately, and uh, it's it's paid off against uh, Cranbrook and PA. We played uh, we played really solid games, and we look to improve on that. We're short on bodies. We'll you know be calling some kids up to play, and um, ice time's available for 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 guys who uh, warrant it. And um, you know I think playing with a short bench, it's it's even more apparent that you keep things simple. Um, the game Saturday, I thought we made a lot of mental mistakes where we turn pucks over where we normally don't do, and. Um, you know, lost some coverage. So I think it's just keeping things simple or on the road. There's not a lot of people to impress. So, uh, you know, just keeping it simple and, uh, you know, taking advantage of our opportunities. I know the guys are pretty excited to go on this trip and uh, we leave tonight for PG, so it should be fun. Here's the latest list of injuries for your Red Deer Rebels, including the long-term ones to Adam Cambites, Justin Weller, and Patrick Bartosak. The two players closest to returning to the lineup would be Devin Fafford and Kale Detzel. Uh, Fafford skated today. Um, Detzel is a definite no for the trip. Uh, Fafford skated today, so we're optimistic with him. Uh, probably on Friday, uh, Hamilton obviously out, and um, I think that's where it's at as of right now. The Rebels will get some help for the road trip from Kevin Pachuk. The young blue liner is being given permission by his midget AAA club in Winnipeg to join the Rebels for their BC trip. Also making cameos on the road trip will be Scott Fazer and Dexter Bricker. It's always nice when you get to spend extra time here because like, you get closer with everyone and you get more comfortable as it, as it goes. Like, every game I play, I get even more comfortable, so hoping to do better this weekend than I have in my past couple games. We bring you now another in our series of player profiles. He was playing perhaps his best hockey as a Rebel when an unfortunate thumb injury took him out of the lineup for the next few weeks. We sit down and learn a little bit more about Rebels forward Colton Mayer. I'm Colton Mayer. I'm from St. Albert, Alberta, and this is my third year with the Red Deer Rebels. Pulls it off the board, puts it towards the net, Makarov save, Mayer scores! Colton Mayer picked up the rebound. And the Rebels... When I was growing up playing hockey, I started out in St. Albert and uh, just, just like any other kid, started in uh, initiation and started working my way up and spent a lot of hours on the outdoor rinks in winter and stuff, so that's, that's what the, most Canadians do is they grow up on the outdoor rinks and that was probably my favorite part part of hockey. The thing I enjoy the most about the game is just coming to the rink every day and playing the game we love. Like We're so fortunate. We, we all love playing hockey and we get the opportunity to play it every day and the team and team and the guys and you just get you just uh, you grow with so many friendships over the years and stuff and so many even after if you don't go to the NHL if this is uh, if you play here until you're 20 and that's it for you you're gonna have a lot of friends that you uh, you keep throughout your life. Something that uh, probably only my family and my teammates know about me is I have a tendency to sleepwalk at night and uh, do some pretty crazy stuff uh, on the road, especially with my roommates. They, they all know that when they're rooming with me that it's going to be pretty crazy crazy during the night. I was rooming with Chad Robinson one time and I, he was just lay, sleeping away and I guess I got kind of came over top of him and started shaking him, telling, telling him we have to get out of here and I'm, I'm sleeping obviously. So he said he tackled me to the bed and told me to wake up and then we just had a good laugh and I went back to bed. A quick update on some changes to our website for this show. You can now view individual stories, player profiles, and much, much more on rebelsthisweek.com. There is also a link to my Big Drive Sports Red Deer Roundup blog, and as well, a link to listen to all Red Deer Rebels games online at 106.7 The Drive. That'll do it for this week's show. Thanks for joining us again. We'll see you next time.